Hello and welcome to my first ever review that I'm going to be uploading onto my new series. For those of you who have seen my introductory video, I'm going to be reviewing the film Pulse from 2001, which was this Japanese horror, which is very spooky and very good. Now, the big point of the film, uh, especially in comparison to Western horror, is that Japanese horror is completely different. Western horror, the spookiness only really happens at night time, when everyone goes to bed and mummy's not there to help you. Whereas Japanese horror, it can happen at any time of the day, whether it be at 6am, 2pm, whatever time. The film does not care what you're doing, you could be doing the most mundane thing, and then boom, spooky demon trying to kill you. Now, these films are very popular in the West, especially in European, but the, they are definitely a delicacy that I love to enjoy. Just cutting them up, having a little taste, excellent. A good example of these films is definitely the Ring movies, as, as you can tell if you've seen the Ring films, they take place in the house, and no matter what time of day it is, the little poor caretaker just can't catch a break. The films themselves, though, are definitely a lot different as they don't they, they are not influenced by American audiences and especially the way those films are kind of produced. So watching any foreign film is definitely a very unique and interesting perspective that not a lot of people get to enjoy or appreciate as you, you kind of get bored of the same films, especially being recorded all the time because America is definitely a big just factory turning out any old film they can think about. So seeing all these different films, especially media, they're just completely different. That's why I've never personally seen an Indian film, but I've definitely seen some clips from Indian movies. <laughs> the amount of editing incorporated in Indian films, whew, fuck me. I might review an Indian film at some point. I, I would actually really like to watch those. I think they'd be great. But anyway, today we'll be reviewing the film Pulse. Uh, which, like I said, came out in 2001 and takes place majoritarily in Tokyo. So the film follows a small group of people who eventually they come across this spooky ghost thing that kind of follows them around that involves doors and other certain spooky stuff like that. Uh, I'll talk more about the plot specifically and give spoilers halfway through the review, but for now I'm just going to give my whole review of the film and sort of explaining a little bit more about it. Uh, I first came across the film a couple of years ago, I saw a video where it was apparently titled the spookiest uh, movie scene of any horror film that ever came out. I watched the scene, thought it was pretty spooky, but didn't really think about anything much of it since then. A couple of days later, uh, earlier I mean, I got some links and some recommendations of videos uh, involving that film, especially with comparing it to the remake, because the film itself has a 2005 remake, which I will also uh, cover as well, and I will judge it based on this movie, and how well the adaptation is, and so and so. Uh, it's an American remake though, so... Looking forward to that. <laughs> anyway, the main film itself, I think, came out really good. I went into the film with no expectations or knowledge of it, and to be honest, I, I really enjoyed it. The only thing I had going in was a small review I looked at, where most reviews did kind of say that the first 30 minutes of the film is pretty scary and spooky, but everything else past that point kind of dies down in the scary factor. And after watching the film, I, I, I agree. It, it does kind of die down halfway through, especially the plot and the pacing of the film, but Overall, I think the film is still really good, because the main aspects the film hold high and definitely get right is the audio. The audio is something I have never witnessed before in a film. It is something extremely well done, and it definitely enhances the spookiness. There's some great scenes, which I'll get into more detail after this, and overall, I think the film did a spectacular job with the soundtrack. It's definitely comes across as if the film itself is definitely... The creator himself has 100% done the film to stand out on its own. It's not meant to kind of follow a certain trend. It does its own thing, and it does its own thing very good. It's an amazing film. I would give it a 7 out of 10, personally, just because I think some of the characters, even though they're mostly in the film, so we can interject ourselves into the world, I mean, kind of see their reaction to things. It's The characters themselves aren't super interesting. They're not really deep. There's no really deep character arc. And a lot of the characters do make some really stupid decisions, <laughs> just like any horror film, you know, but still, besides from that, I think the film is great. Uh, it, the, the characters themselves, the great thing about the characters is their reactions to the actual scares themselves, because they look absolutely horrified at some of the things that we see. 
The audience might see the horror and think, this isn't anything particularly spooky, because no characters actually run at the camera or do a spooky jump scare or anything like that. It's just sort of creepy visuals, and it's just meant there to make you feel very unsettled. Whereas the main characters, they are horrified. They are absolutely terrified for their own lives. And when you see that portrayed in the screen, you can't help but feel the same way. It's like when you see a group of people running away from something that you don't know, but they're all running for their lives. Even though you can't tell what it is that they're scared of, you are terrified too, because you're afraid of what you don't know. Your mind will always create something more terrifying than what they can portray on screen. And what they do portray on screen, you know, it's particularly okay, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's, it's, it's decent, you know. But the characters enhance that spookiness because they're so terrified of what they're looking at. And so it really does enhance the film, and I think they've done a spectacular job. Now to get into more spoilers of the film, I'm going to be talking about a few particular uh, scenes. I will leave links down below in the video if you want to take a look at the scenes yourself. Uh, so there's a few scenes we're going to talk about. The first one is at the start of the film. The start of the film kind of starts off a little slowly. The film begins with the main character going over to a friend's house as they really need to find the spooky Minecraft disc so they can give it to their project uh, where they're at work. However, when she goes to his house, he seems perfectly okay, aside from just sort of staring into the window. And then as she goes off to refetch the disc, he ends up hanging himself in the room as they're talking to each other. Which obviously, that's pretty uncomfortable and pretty spooky, especially when you first watch it. And her reaction, obviously, it's, it's, it's complete horrified. But I'm pretty sure anybody would react that way when seeing their friend you know, commit suicide. It's such a horrible thing. But the film kind of brushes past that and shows the characters all questioning why. Why would he do it? He was always kind of a, you know, shy character, kind of kept to himself, but why would he do it? He didn't seem like that kind of guy. So they go onto his computer to find out particularly why he would commit such an act, and they find pictures on his computer of his own home, specifically his computer setup. And they're wondering how was he able to take this picture because he's in the picture himself. Uh, the movie itself is kind of dated, especially with the technology. The film itself was recorded in 2001, but I'm pretty sure, like, there's no way technology was that bad back then. Like, I, that, I don't know, dude. They, there was a scene in the film where the guy had to pull out a disc to go on the internet. <sighs> That's how you'd know the technology is outdated. He had a a guide, a, a fucking how-to guide book that says welcome to the internet. That's how you know this shit is old. But to be honest, it's actually really great to see these big refrigerator computers. <laughs> Just fucking huge, literally cinder blocks. It's great. Anyway, they investigate the picture and they notice that in the reflection of the screen, there's a really weird face. So that one of the characters, one of the female characters asks the male colleague, hey, why don't you zoom in on it? And the character goes, oh, okay. But the thing that's great about the movie is when it shows the characters speaking, especially when we see them, there's background audio, background ambience, you know, the usual, you know, you can hear the wind, birds chirping, so-and-so, all that stuff. As soon as it cuts to the screen of him editing the image, the audio is completely removed. It is complete silence, and we are just left to witness what he's going to do. He enhances the image and it's revealed to be a really weird face of a figure of a human. And when it gets closer, this gut-wrenching audio plays. I can't describe it. It's just, it's so bizarre. It's so strange. And then the, the film just carries on. The film doesn't explain itself. It just zooms in on this face with this creepy audio with no other sound and just goes, let's just move on. <laughs> Fuck it, why not? It's, it, it, is, it is great. But it's not the best scare. The best scare comes later on in the film, but I would like to talk about the spookiest scene that the film, uh, that the one video I saw on YouTube was referring to. The, the scene itself refers to the guy going into these doors that are, that are labeled as the forbidden rooms. These are rooms that are taped off with red tape to tell people not to go in there because spooky demons and maybe Jake Paul's gonna be in there. You never know. <laughs> but anyway, the going anyway, the main character, one of them anyway, goes into there and tries to investigate, try and find out what happened to their dead friend. But unfortunately, Miss Spooky Scary Demon comes out from the back, crumping it just on the dance floor. 
it's <laughs> her walk is very strange and it definitely is unsettling but every time I see her like bend down like when she does that shit I just think of Marge Simpson crumping it I'm so sorry <laughs> that's all I think about she's just busting a move meanwhile my man's literally having the worst nightmare of his life it's it's great <laughs> I'll leave a link to that down below so you can have a look at that it is cinema for me, the spookiest scene though came comes later on in the film when that character who got spooky scared by Marge Simpson eventually he dies. It's never really fully explained how they die themselves. They kind of just turn into shadows on the wall. That's typically how they die. At the start of the film, it kind of shows them committing suicide, like with the first guy. And there's another scene where a woman jumps off a very tall place and slams into the floor like a pancake. And so it's made us to believe that when you get jump scared by a spooky ghost you get to this depressive state where you want to kill yourself. And that's how we're expected the rest of the film to go, but it really isn't. The rest of the film, especially the two characters that we see die later in the film, they just kind of turn into shadows. They just evaporate. We don't really see them die or take their own lives. It's, it's really strange how they kind of change it. But anyway, so the scene for me that was definitely the scariest is when she goes to check on her part, uh, colleague who is obviously been uh, spooky jump scared by the woman and he is in the break room or the storage room, whatever the room it is. He goes against the wall and he tells her that he's absolutely terrified and that he doesn't know what to do. She walks upstairs thinking, bruh, tell me about it. He eventually does die and become a shadow on the wall, just like all the other victims of the ghosts. And she goes down there to investigate. She sees his spooky ghost on the wall, and she walks up to it to investigate this mysterious shadow that she's seen. And as, just like from before, as soon as she's looking at the shadow, we can hear the surround sound of the room, you know, general acoustics. As soon as it cuts to the perspective of the wall, looking back at her, there is no audio. It's actually even more silent than the scene before. And as soon as I saw that scene, I was like, ooh, it's kind of, ooh, ooh, kind of spooky, no, no, no sound or anything. The guy starts talking, but it, it's, I don't know how they did this. They altered the audio to make it sound as if when he speaks, he's speaking while in my room. It is so weird. It literally sounds like, like he whispers, he says like, help me, or some shit like that. But like, it literally sounded like he said it while stood right behind my ear, give me a nice gentle back massage. I, I did not consent to that. That is not, that is, <laughs> that is fucking awful. It was downright horrendous how bad that made me fucking feel. I had goosebumps up my fucking back, up my arm. It is terrifying to have the idea that he's in the room with you, escaping from the movie and coming to the real world. It's such a terrifying thing. The movie is using the audio against me. It is terrifying. And again, we see her reaction. It starts off with a gentle, curious looking, and then she just has this sense of dread, like she's just seen her family member murdered in front of her. She looks absolutely disgusted and terrified. It, it's all great. I, I think that scene was definitely the best. Although it was kind of the peak of the film, it didn't really get any scarier than that. The scares definitely died down, which was a big downside. However, overall, I think the film did do a really good job. It was definitely scary, and the main plots of the film, while all that not massively interesting, it was still enjoyable. It was really interesting. The main plot just basically follows his characters trying to understand what the hell is happening. And the actual biggest thing of the film, plot-wise, that I think was definitely the strongest, was the spooky ghosts wasn't happening solely to the characters. It was happening to everybody in Tokyo. If you watch the film, you'll notice the background characters slowly start disappearing, which is really interesting to watch because it gets to the point where the main characters is literally just sat in the arcade and he stops and realizes he's the only one left. And at the end of the film, there's this TV screen which is going over all the people that have gone missing in Tokyo. And the TV screen just keeps going. It keeps saying people's names. Everybody in the film eventually disappears, aside from the two main characters. And I think that's really interesting. You always see films where you always follow the main characters being haunted or being followed by some spooky, crazy, evil creature. But in this film, it happens to everybody. Everybody is being attacked at once, and even though they don't really focus on all the other people, you can still see the effects of that. She, there's a scene where she goes to the grocery store, and there's no one working there at all. There's no one behind the till, and she just runs off and steals the stuff, because no one's there to stop her, and no one's there to allow her to buy the things. It's a really interesting concept, 
how it's this world pandemic and it's not like the main characters are being targeted in the slightest because they're not it's just this horrible demon that wants to kill as many people as possible it just wants to get as many nays and, and rank up that kill list you know it's it's fucking it, it's good it was definitely interesting and i have not seen something like that especially in a long time overall though i think the film did a really good job and I definitely recommend watching it for yourself. It is definitely really interesting. Even if you're somebody who doesn't really enjoy Japanese films, I watched a film with the uh, Japanese and English subtitles. I think it's the best way to watch these kind of films as they were created and made in Japanese. So I think watching them how they are made is really good because it definitely immerses you more into the world and how the film was meant to be presented. So. Even if you're not really a particularly fan of reading subtitles, I definitely do think it's a really good idea to pick up the film and watch it for yourself. It's definitely interesting, it's definitely a very unique experience that I have not experienced in a long time. But anyway, so that's, my, that's, my, that's my Pulse review. Definitely good. 7 out of 10. Did a good job. I think it was pretty interesting. But yeah, watch the film for yourself today. I think uh, next I'll probably review uh, Halloween or... I'll probably uh, review the uh, 2005 remake, um, which, which I don't know if that did any, I don't know if that was any good or not. Uh, we shall see. We, we shall see. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and listening to me just garble out all this garbage. Uh, please like and subscribe. It would make me very happy and I might go to sleep with some peace of mind for once. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much and have a great day.